Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective. And today I have a ThinkPad. And this ThinkPad is a W540. Now what we are going to be focusing on today is this. This is the buttonless trackpad, or as many people have affectionately called it, the clunk pad. It's really not popular. So unpopular, in fact, it was only ever featured on this generation, the 40 generation, then it was immediately replaced. If you buy a W541, the principal change is that this has been swapped out for a more traditional button-style trackpad. In fact, when this machine was shipped to me, I got a little present. So if we open this up, we will see that this is a much, much nicer setup for that trackpad. They even gave me an extra cable, which I don't think I'll need, but I think I just came from a donor computer. So what I'd like to do today, ladies and gentlemen, is show you how to do this swap. Now this swap can be done step by step as you see it here, also on the T540. However, the basic principal operations will work on any of the 40 generation. That's one of the nice things about these is that all of the screw posts and cables are the same. So you can actually swap this out and get a much better experience overall. The only other thing that I'll mention is that for some trackpads, not all, I've heard conflicting reports, that you will need to do a little bit of driver install gibberish to get them to work. Some of these that are not genuine parts or they're uh, knockoffs, uh, play with the drivers a little bit differently, so just be prepared to do a little bit of uh, driver configuration if you need. And I'll leave some links in the description down below that might be able to help you out with that process. So without further ado, let me walk you through all of the steps that you need to do to swap this out on the W540 and the T540. The very first step that we need is to, of course, remove the battery. That's a simple matter of flipping the machine over, pushing the two catches away, pushing the battery out, and putting it off to the side. Once that is done, we can go ahead and flip the machine back over, and we can then start the process of removing the keyboard. Now, if you look at the very bottom of the machine here, you will see a series of notches cut into the keyboard. And what those are for is for you to put a tool, usually plastic is best, but if you're careful, metal will work just fine. And what we're actually doing, we're pushing the plastic casing essentially that exists between all these keys up. Once we have that moved up just enough, we're able to take a small Phillips screwdriver and go in at the top of some of the keys. There are five total. The caps lock key, the F key, the J key, the colon semicolon key, the enter key, and the six key. There are screws by each of those that need to be loosened. And with those keys loosened, we can simply rock this keyboard out of place. And if we flip it like so, there are two ribbon cables that we just need to flip up the connectors for, and that easily comes out of place. And then we can go ahead and put that off to the side. It is worth noting that this ribbon cable up here will need to be disconnected at some point. So if we want to save ourselves a little bit of time and not forget to do it later, we can just do that while we're here now. Now the next part of the process that we need to do is we need to remove the palm rest and trim here. And to do that, we will need to flip the machine over and remove the screws on the bottom of the machine. Thankfully, the pictograms have returned and we will need to remove these two here for the large door. And we can put that off to the side. 
Once we've gotten to this point, we do have seven screws that we need to remove. We have two here, one here, three, four, five, six. Seven's around here somewhere. Ah, there it is. So those six here, and then this one will probably just need to be tapped out of place. There we go. And once all those screws are removed, we can go ahead and open up the machine. And I'm going to do this at a bit of an angle, just because it's a bit easier. And I'm going to use an old gift card. And I'm gonna start at the express card slot here. Because we've got some plastic clips we need to pop. And don't forget, if you didn't undo this uh, ribbon cable, <laughs> make sure you do it now. Great. And then if we go ahead and lean this forward, we can see our ribbon cable assembly here to the motherboard. And we're just going to go ahead and flip that up, remove that. And this is the part that we're going to be continuing to work on. The next step that we'll need to do is obviously disconnect this ribbon cable here. And it is buried rather nicely in there. You do need to flip that black clip up there just by with your fingernail. And then that backs out. And we can actually just move that off to the side with our hand. And then we have a series of screws. With those screws removed, this simply pops out. Now the one thing that you will note is that this screw post here is occupied on the original, but it's not on this one. So you're not gonna be putting back all of those screws. This one, oddly enough, already has the screws inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and use these. As you can see, it drops in no modification required. So we'll go ahead and flip that over on a flat surface. And we're gonna go ahead and reinstall four out of the five screws. All right, now it is a matter of navigating this ribbon cable back in. We wanna make sure that this black piece of plastic is flipped up. Now we just have to put it all back together Assembly is, of course, the reverse of disassembly. And there we have it. We have the entire machine reassembled. Now it is a simple matter of installing an operating system on this. And then, of course, making sure that our drivers are playing nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if after installing all the drivers, you have an issue where these buttons do not work, but your click does down here, let me quickly show you how we're gonna deal with that. The very first thing that we will need to do is uh, go into Device Manager and actually delete or uninstall the drivers for the Synaptic Pointing Device. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And to do this, we are using an external mouse just because obviously once we do this, we're going to have to reinstall some other drivers. Doing that without another mouse is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt. You will need a specific driver pack. Uh, it is the N10GX25W. The newer ones from Lenovo's website don't work. I've tried them. So I will hopefully leave a reliable link to that driver pack in the description for you to grab if you need it. So let's do a quick restart. And while the files are copying, I should point out that if you're running Ubuntu or Linux, or you don't have to do this at all, it just works. Beautiful. At any rate, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I am going to encourage you to support the channel however you can. But four methods that work really great are, of course, liking the video, 
sharing it, subscribing, and of course, hitting that notification bell. So when I release a video like this, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.